Welcome back to Basic Electronics. In the last lecture, we looked at the Ebers Mole model, which describes the BJT in all modes of operation. We will now use the Ebers Mole model to plot the collector current IC of a BJT as a function of the collector to emitter voltage VCE. With the help of the IV characteristics, we will take another look at the earlier BJT circuit and figure out the correct solution. Finally, we will look at a circuit with a PNP transistor. So let us begin. We now want to discuss the IV characteristics of a BJT in a graphical form. Now first we note that uh, a BJT is quite different uh, from a diode in that it has three terminals. For a diode we had only two terminals so there was exactly one current and one voltage to talk about and therefore the entire diode behavior could be captured with just one plot the current versus voltage. That is uh, not the case uh, for a BJT we can uh, look at several different things and uh, here are some of these IC versus VCB so this current IC versus this voltage VCB for different values of IE IE1, IE2 and so on or we can plot IC versus VCE IC as a function of VCE for different values of VBE VBE1, VBE2 and so on or we can plot IC versus VCE IC versus VCE for different values of the base current and of course there are some other ways uh, of plotting the characteristics as well. So the IV relationship uh, for a BJT is not a single curve but a family of curves or characteristics and uh, we will look at the IC versus VCE curves or characteristics for different IB values because uh, we will find these very useful in understanding amplifier biasing. What we are going to do is take an NPN transistor and plot IC as a function of uh, VCE this voltage drop for various values of IB and uh, we will do that by solving the Ebers mole uh, equations. So the experimental setup would be something like this a voltage source is connected between collector and emitter its value is VCE so this is going to be our x-axis uh, variable the collector current IC is going to be our y-axis variable so we are going to plot IC as a function of VCE and uh, we will find that uh, IC versus VCE depends very much on what this uh, base current is. So therefore for a given base current let's say 10 microamps we are going to get one of these curves IC versus VCE. If I change this 10 microamps to let's say 20 microamps or 50 microamps we are going to get another IC versus VCE curve and so on. So therefore the IV characteristics of a BJT like we said in the last slide is not one single curve but a family of uh, curves and that is the complete uh, picture that we want to see. These are the parameters we will consider alpha f the forward alpha as 0.99 that makes beta equal to alpha by 1 minus alpha that is 99 alpha r the reverse alpha equal to 0.5 that makes the reverse beta equal to alpha r by 1 minus alpha r or 1 and clearly this transistor is uh, very poor in the reverse direction because this beta is so small in the reverse direction and these are the saturation uh, currents IES 10 raised to minus 14 ampere and ICS 2 times 10 raised to minus 14 amperes. First let us replace the transistor with the Ebers mole model like that 
and uh, recall that in the active mode we need to only consider ie prime and alpha ie prime but in general we need to consider all four branches okay what we want to do is to get ic as a function of vce for a fixed value of ib that is 10 microamperes what we will do now is to take one specific value of vce say 1 volt and uh, figure out how we can calculate ic for that vce with ib equal to 10 microamperes so for convenience let us take the emitter node as the reference node so that means ve is 0 volts and vc the collector voltage would then be 1 volt because we have taken vce equal to 1 volt and we don't know what vb is going to be so what we need to do is to solve the ebers small equations for vb and once we know vb we know this difference vbe we also know this difference vbc and once we know these two voltages we can find i e prime given by that equation we can find i c prime and once we know that we can find all other quantities for example i e is going to be i e prime minus alpha r i c prime and so on so we need to get an equation in terms of v b and uh, what is that equation that equation is given by i b equal to 10 microamperes what is i b i b is equal to i e prime plus i c prime minus alpha f i e prime minus alpha r i c prime and uh, i e prime and i c prime essentially are functions of v b because v b e here is v b minus v e v e is known 0 volts v b c is equal to v b minus v c v c is known 1 volt and therefore i e prime and i c prime can be written in terms of v b so that is the equation we need to solve for VB and uh, you can see that it's going to be a non-linear equation because we have exponential terms over here. So we need to use some iterative method to obtain VB. So by solving this equation that is IB equal to 10 microamperes for VCE equal to 1 volt we are going to find one value of the collector current and then we repeat this exercise for other values of VCE and that is how we are going to plot IC as a function of VCE and here are the results that we obtain this axis is VCE this is VCE equal to 0 this is VCE equal to 2 volts this curve here is VBE that means the voltage across the base emitter diode this curve is VBC, the voltage across the base collector diode. This current is IC prime, this current here. And uh, the solid line here is IC, the terminal current. And the dashed line is IE prime, this current here. Let us look at the various quantities of interest at a specific value of VCE say VC equal to 1 volt and let us start with the junction voltages here is VBC and for VCE equal to 1 volt VBC is about minus 0.3 volts that means the base collector diode is under reverse bias and that means IC prime is very small nearly 0 and therefore this branch is like an open circuit and so is this branch and if you look at the IC prime plot, we see that IC prime is 0 at VC equal to 1 volt. Next, let us look at VBE, the base emitter voltage, this plot here. And VBE is about 0.6 volts, maybe between 0.6 and 0.7. And that means the base emitter diode is under forward bias. And therefore, our transistor is operating in the active mode 
with the base emitter junction under forward bias and the base collector junction under reverse bias. Now since IC prime is 0, IC is equal to alpha f times IE prime. What is alpha f? Very close to 1 is 0.99 for this transistor. So IC is nearly equal to IE prime and that is what we see over here. IC and IE prime are nearly equal. Okay. Now since we know that the transistor is operating in the active mode, we also know that IC can be written as beta times IB and what is beta? Beta is 99. So IC is expected to be 99 times IB or 99 times 10 microamperes that is 990 microamperes that is nearly 1 milliamp and that is what we observe over here IC is about 1 milliamp. Let us summarize the situation for VCE equal to 1 volt. We have about 0.7 volts appearing across D1 and the rest of the voltage that is 1 volt minus 0.7 volts about 0.3 volts appears across the base collector junction and since this end is positive compared to this one the base collector diode is not conducting. Alright, what we will do now is consider another value of VCE namely VCE equal to 2 volts. For this voltage we notice that our base emitter voltage has not really changed. We can't really tell the difference and the entire difference that is 2 volts minus 1 volt equal to 1 volt has appeared in PBC. This was minus 0.3 volts and this is about minus 1.3 volts. So the base collector junction continues to be under reverse bias. The transistor continues to be in active mode. IC prime continues to be 0 and our collector current also remains equal to 1 milliamp. So all that has happened as we go from VCE equal to 1 volt to VCE equal to 2 volts is that an additional reverse bias of 1 volt has now appeared across this base collector diode. Earlier with VCE equal to 1 volt the reverse bias was minus 0.3 volts and with VCE equal to 2 volts it is now minus 1.3 volts. Apart from that there is no real change. Let us now look at what happens when we change uh, VCE in the other direction let us say from 1 volt to 0.5 volts and let us uh, start looking at the diode voltages first. Now VBE has not really changed it has remained at uh, about 0.7 volts. VBC has changed from minus 0.3 volts to about 0.2 volts. So the entire change in VCE has actually got reflected in uh, VBC. And uh, IC prime continues to be small. Note that VBC has now become slightly positive but it is not uh, large enough to make IC prime substantially uh, or significantly large and that is why on this scale IC prime uh, is still looking like 0. So the transistor continues to be in the active mode and IC continues to be about 1 milliamp that is beta times IB. At about 0.2 volts somewhere here the current IC prime starts rising because uh, the forward bias across the base collector junction has now increased to make IC prime significantly uh, large. Apart from that there is also a slight reduction in uh, VBE as we see over there 
and uh, because IC is alpha f i e prime minus i c prime this current is now decreasing because v b e prime is going down a little bit and this current is increasing there what happens is i c now starts going down like that so we have two distinct regions in the b j t i v characteristics the right side of this line is the so called linear region which we have been calling as the active region as well and we are already familiar with that the left side is the saturation region now this region is new to us in this region both the base emitter and base collector junctions are under uh, forward bias and uh, the collector current is less than what it would be in the active region so let us summarize these observations we have a linear region the right side of that line in which the base emitter junction is under forward bias base collector junction is under reverse bias and ic is beta times ib and in this example it is about 1 milliamp we have the saturation region on the left of this line and in saturation region the base emitter junction is under forward bias and the base collector junction is also under forward bias and in this region ic is less than beta times ib as we can see over here so here is the ic vce curve for 10 microamps again and in the linear region or the active mode the collector current is uh, beta times ib which is uh, about 1 milliamp now we want to look at the ic vce curve when the base current changes from 10 microamps to 20 microamps so let's look at the results that is the ic vce curve now for 20 microamps and uh, we see that it has not really changed much in uh, many aspects except in the linear region ic has become 2 milliamps approximately 2 milliamps and for 10 microamps it was about 1 milliamp and this of course is expected because in the linear region we have ic equal to beta times ib beta is about 100 so 100 times 20 microamps that is 2 milliamps so this part is really expected simply from this equation and the boundary between the linear and saturation regions has also not really changed the transition is happening at about the same uh, vce value about 0.2 uh, volts so as we go from ib equal to 10 microamps to ib equal to 20 microamps there is a large change in ic from 1 milliamp to 2 milliamps that's a factor of 2 and we now want to see how that change gets reflected in the vbe and vbc uh, plots what is uh, ic in the linear region ic is alpha times ie prime so if ic has changed by a factor of 2 ie prime would also have changed by a factor of 2 so let us look at uh, the equation for ie prime now ie prime is ies e raised to vbe by vt this one is too small compared to the first term we won't worry about that and if ie prime changes by a factor of 2 it calls for a change in this factor e raised to vbe by vt by 2 now because this is an exponential relationship that requires vbe to change only slightly and that is what we are seeing here essentially so the blue curve is for 
uh, IB equal to 10 microamps and uh, pink one is for IB equal to 20 microamps and we see that for 20 microamps the base emitter voltage is only slightly larger than the case for 10 microamps and uh, because these two voltages must add up to VCE that uh, change is also reflected in VBC. So overall there is a large change in uh, the collector current uh, plot but there is hardly any change in the base emitter and base collector uh, voltages as we change IV from 10 microamps to 20 microamps. And uh, based on this experience, we can now predict what is going to happen for some other value of uh, IB. For example, if IB is made 5 microamps uh, instead of 10, IC is going to be 0.5 milliamp because we are changing IB by a factor of 2. IC will also change by a factor of 2 uh, because of this proportionality here. And then we will get a curve, ICVC curve, which looks like this. And we don't really need to do that calculation. Similarly, if IB is 15 microamps, that is between these two values, IC would then look like uh, that. And all of these uh, curves will cross over from linear to saturation regions at about VCE equal to 0.2 volts. Let us now revisit this uh, circuit that we have looked at before and uh, if you remember when RB was changed from 100k to 10k we found that uh, active mode was not possible anymore and now having uh, studied the ICVCE characteristics we would be able to explain what happens. So we are now in a position to explain what happens when RB is decreased from 100k to 10k. So what we will do is we will plot IC versus VCE for two values of IB 100k and 10k and uh, as we have seen earlier if we take this voltage as approximately 0 0.7 volts then RB times IB is 2 volts minus 0.7 so that is 1.3 so IB is 1.3 by 100k or 1.3 by 10k uh, depending on the value of RB and let us now look at the IC VCE characteristics for these two uh, base currents so here is IB equal to 13 microamp which corresponds to RB equal to 100k and uh, what would be the collector current here in the linear region that would be 13 microamps multiplied by beta that is 1.3 milliamps and that is exactly what uh, this is when we change rb from 100k to 10k our base current goes up by a factor of 10 and uh, it now becomes 130 microamps and now the collector current in the linear region is 130 microamps times 100 or 13 milliamps so this uh, collector current is now 13 milliamps now whatever solution we find for this uh, circuit that is the value of IC and the value of uh, VC must satisfy either this constraint imposed by the transistor if RB is 100k or this constraint if RB is 10k and uh, note that VC here this voltage is the same as VCE because the emitter is at uh, 0 volts now apart from that there is one more constraint that we need to worry about and that is imposed by this uh, resistance RC so let us see what that is so in addition to the BJT IC VCE curve the circuit variables must also satisfy 
the following constraint and uh, let us see where this is coming from vcc equal to vce plus icrc vcc must be equal to this voltage plus this voltage now this is just vce that is this variable here and that voltage drop is icrc now this equation essentially looks like a straight line in the ic vce plane and uh, let's plot that straight line now and that is what it looks like its uh, x intercept is 10 volts and that is obtained by putting ic equal to 0 if ic is 0 then vce is the same as vcc which is 10 volts and its uh, y intercept is 10 milliamps and if we put vce equal to 0 now we get ic equal to vcc by rc vcc is uh, 10 volts rc is 1k so that is 10 milliamps so that is the graph of uh, this constraint which is imposed by rc the intersection of the load line and the bjt characteristics gives us the solution for the circuit and that is because the solution has to satisfy the load line constraint as well as the constraint imposed by the transistor IB and uh, that constraint is uh, given by this uh, curve for RB equal to 100k and by that curve for RB equal to 10k. Now for uh, the first case RB equal to 100k that intersection is somewhere here and as we have seen earlier the solution is uh, VCE equal to 8.7 volts and uh, IC equal to 1.3 milliamps. In the second case that is RB equal to uh, 10K, we note that the intersection of the load line and the IC VCE curve happens to be in the saturation region, not in the linear region and uh, that is why we found that uh, linear region was not possible when we tried to solve uh, this uh, same problem analytically. So what is the solution now? So the VCE is between 0 and 0 0.2 volts. We often take this approximately as just 0.2 volts and uh, so therefore we have a voltage drop of 0 0.2 volts here. This is 10 volts, so 9.8 volts will drop there. So 9.8 divided by 1k, that is 9.8 milliamps. That would be IC. So that is the solution, VCE of about 0.2 volts and IC equal to 9.8 milliamps. So sometimes these uh, graphical methods are uh, very useful and they help us to uh, visualize uh, things much better than uh, an analytical uh, approach. Let us take this example with a PNP transistor. Assuming that the transistor is operating in the active region, we want to find RE and RC such that IE, this current here, the emitter current is 2 milliamps and VBC, this voltage is 1 volt and uh, we are given that alpha is nearly equal to 1. Now to begin with, let us first check that this condition VBC equal to 1 volt does indeed correspond to the linear region or the active region. So uh, we have P and P here so this is an end region that is a P region VBC is 1 volt so VB is higher than VC by 1 volt so that means the N type region is higher than the P type region by 1 volt and that means reverse bias. So this junction is indeed under uh, reverse bias and now let us uh, calculate RE and RC. So in this loop we can write VEB this voltage drop which is going to be 0.7 minus this voltage rise 5 volts plus IE times RE equal to 0 and that gives us IE RE equal to 5 minus 0.7 or 4.3 volts and since we are uh, given the value of IE 2 milliamps we can find RE turns out to be 
2.15 k for the corrector resistance the rc value here we can uh, write a loop equation for this loop vbc plus icrc minus vcc equal to 0 and that gives us icrc equal to vcc minus vbc and uh, since alpha is nearly equal to 1 ic and ie are approximately equal to each other and therefore instead of ic here we can use ie and that gives us rc so ie times rc is about 5 minus 1 and that gives us rc equal to 4 volts by ie which is 2 milliamps so that is 2k In conclusion, we have seen how to represent the behavior of a BJT with the help of IV curves. We have used the IV characteristics to obtain a graphical solution of the BJT circuit considered earlier. We have also taken up a circuit with a PNP transistor and seen that it can be analyzed in much the same manner as an NPN transistor. Having looked at BJT basics, we will now start looking at an important topic, namely amplification. That is all for now. See you later.